Okay, so the aim of our first button, the first player, is we want to show the name, the surname, and the team of the first player in the database, in these three fields. So we can go into that button. The first thing we need to do. Okay, so what, what we're going to use in our Delphi program. When we talk about the tables, you must now remember basically how it works. We've got access, and inside there, there's a TBL teams, TBL players, and that has everything to do with access. But we did this connection now. So what the connection does, it links the database to Delphi, but the database is separate. We're basically going to work with the connection. And then we've got those two ADO tables, ADO table one and two, they link to the specific tables. So when we're working with code, we're not going to work with the TBL teams, TBL um, players, we're going to work with our ADO table one and ADO table two. For us for now, I didn't change those components. When you get to most probably tests and exams and maybe our further programs, We'll change that component as well. They like the ADO tables to start also with TBL. So, in effect, those our ADO table 1 will actually call TBL players. And our ADO table 2 will call TBL teams. But I specifically don't want to do this now so that you just realize the difference. We're not working with the database. We're going to work with our components that we've got. And our components are called ADO Table 1 and ADO Table 2 for now. If you're also not sure, you can see in question papers, they tell you the names. And in our program, it's there. There's our ADO Table is called ADO Table 1. And our other ADO Table is ADO Table 2. So we're going to work with these two. We must just remember Table 1 is the players and Table 2 is the teams. For us for now, that's why this is bad names for us for now. But just, just to get a hold of what we're actually doing. Okay, so what we're going to do in our button. First thing we want to do, do you agree which one of the two are we going to use now if we want the players? ADO table 1. So we're going to do our ADO table 1. We want to go to the first record. Why we do that is, it depends where a person clicked. If we do, we didn't do the DB grid yet. But if the DB grid was there, and the user clicked somewhere else, like on the third one, and we didn't say this, our button would just display the third one's information. So we specifically want to tell the ADO table, go to the first record, and then it's going to do what we're going to say to tell it to do now. So this is also very important for all our future buttons, when we want to go search for a name, or change a name, or any of those things, you have to start at the first one, so that you can start looking from the first one. Because the user might click at the bottom, and then look for a name that was above it, and then it will never find the name, because it just looks from there downwards. So we always want to go, we want to, go to the first record, and then carry on from there. Okay, so this takes us to the first record of ADO Table 1. And then in our edit box, in our edit box name, in the text property, we want to put, what do we want to put there? Do you agree? We want to put the name of the database, of the table. So if we look at our axis, it's called player name, it's the field name. So what we want to do in our ADO table 1, the field we want, so now we go square brackets. Remember I told you when we're going to start working with these databases with code constructs, it's going to seem like it's arrays. So that's sort of also an indication. So our ADO table 1, we want a field called player name. Okay, it's inside quotes. So it's not case sensitive. So it doesn't matter if cap small doesn't matter.
Okay, let's quickly play this thing. Let's see what it does. And we'll see Peter, and if you look in your first record, player ID number one is Peter. So we're happy it works. So that's literally all you do. Our ADO table one takes you to the first record. And if you want to refer to a value in a field, you just say your ADO table and then in square brackets the field you want to use. And because it's at the first record, it will take the first record's player name and put it in EDT name. And then we'll just do the same with the rest of the other three. What could happen? If in your GUI, some of you missed when I said in your ADO table, you must make it active. So if it's not active, and you click your play, it will work fine. And then when you click the button, you get the error. ADO table 1 cannot perform this operation on a closed data set. So if you see the closed data set 1, that just means go back to your GUI, go to your ADO table, and just make sure the active is true. And then if you play it again, it will work fine. What could also happen in your button? You think it's player name. You click play. Get there when you click the button. Now it tells you, edit table one, field player name not found. So when you see that, when it says the field player name is not found, that means this field called player name is not found in the database. So you must go check. Either you misspelled it or they use some abbreviations or something. So if it tells you a field is not found, just go check the spelling. In this case, we added a space. So then we see, we go look at the database, we say, oh, there's no space. Take out the space, and it works again. Okay, so to go to the next record, you just say your ADO table one dot next, and then you'll just display again your same displays that you had. Okay, so if you save that thing and click play, You can go to your first player, and then you can next, 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 go through them. Yes, yeah, so let's see if we click. I hope there's not too many. Okay, and then when we reach the end, just nothing happens. Yeah, reset that spot.